Hi everyone, welcome to Saturday, another live stream, and uh, big hello to everyone that's joined us. Uh, hi to Adrian, Axelsoft, um, and also let's say a quick hi to all of our on stream callers. And we'll start with top left, we'll go with Darren. How you going, Darren? Ah, not bad. How are you all doing over there? And everyone who's watching online? I'm good. <coughs> oh, yeah. Quick, I'll quickly jump over to uh, Inky. How you going, Inky? Yeah, all good. All good here. Hello. Perfect. Hello, everyone. Perfect, perfect. Let us know in the chat if there's any problems with the audio. And a quick jump over to Dazza. Hey, guys. How, you going? How are you? We're good. Excellent. Awesome. awesome. Hope you all had a good week. There all you all are. So, um... For those who have just joined us and have and never been on my stream before, um, welcome. And um, we've got you know some stuff to talk about. We also have a couple of usual segments. Um, the topic of the stream this week is um, you know kind of DIY projects and kits. And um, we're gonna obviously they're gonna be related to synths and synthesizers and things like that. So we're gonna make sure that um, everybody will you know keep it on track. We're not gonna talk about um, other nerdy stuff, but yeah, um, you know, things like URAC do a lot of DIY kits. So we'll, get, we'll talk about that. Absolutely. Um, there's also, um, quite a bit of news to get through. There's, um, a few funny things. There's a few scammy things. Um, so we'll try and get through all the segments. So, um, are you guys ready? We'll rock and roll with the, the first segment. Awesome. Awesome. And that is the funny side. Let's hit that go. Okay, welcome to the funny side this week. And yeah, um, now I've got to remember which button to press. I always get this wrong. I think it's button number one. Starting, now this one sort of carried on from last last stream. I was about to say last week, because I wasn't here last week. Last stream where we had Roland talking about how they don't chase ghosts. Well, I decided to get creative and do some of my own memes. Um, so this one, I don't know if you get it or not, but anyway, let's let's roll with it. So Roland have released this, uh, this is all fake by the way, Roland have released this new watch, it's an analogue watch called Chase the Ghost, <laughs> and it's been worn by Jeff Woodruff, I don't know if you know, if you guys know who Jeff Woodruff is, but he's the guy that featured in all of the original Jupiter 8 um, promotional <laughs> catalogues and stuff that they did, so it was always interesting, and uh, I don't know if you can see just above his wrist there, he's got um, got the watch on. So yeah, there you go. Um, we'll start with that one. Some of these are pretty lame, by the way. So let's moving right along. Now everyone has seen probably to death this this meme where you see the crazy lady and the cat. But remember, I did this meme about two weeks ago, and it has to appear on my show. So if everyone <laughs> ever is into Volkers, you've got the Volker new base, of course. And um, I don't think it's probably the worst named synth ever. <laughs> Because, yeah, I mean, what are you going to call it? New base or the other one? <laughs> All right, moving right along. And obviously, last stream, we talked about the TD3 from Beringer. So obviously, we need the red pill or the blue pill. Oh, that's brilliant. <laughs> so which TD3 do you want, Darren? The red one or the blue one? And he's going to say silver. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say a black, even it's though they don't do one. They don't have a black one. You have to spray paint it. All right, keep going. Okay, there's, I think there's one more. Is there one more? Yeah, there's one more. Actually, there might be even one, another one after this. Um, this one I came across this week, so this one's quite recent. <laughs> this is kind of like one of those ads you see, you know, set your pockets free. Go from this to this. Start filling <laughs> your wallet with the synthesizers. <laughs> That's brilliant. <laughs> so there's a few of those. That's true. I have an issue though, because my wallet's already like that before. <laughs> <laughs> yes. He sold his wallet. <laughs> he, he sold his soul. Ah, oh, dearie me. Okay, so um, I just double checked. I think I've got another one and I've forgotten to put it on here. Um, or should we just leave it till next week? No, we'll leave it till next week, bugger it. I haven't got time to do it. Okay, so. Finished with funny side, quick reaction from everyone. Was that crap or good or? 
What was your favourite? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'd probably say go? the wallet. The wallet? The wallet. Yeah? Yeah, because that's... <laughs> Mine's as thin as that, true? well, that's the only problem. <laughs> yeah. Because it's true. It is. Inky, what was your favourite? The wallet. The wallet. <laughs> because we can relate. Dazza, what about you? Oh, Dazza's paused in thought, everybody. Oh, here we go. He's coming back. That was that was the wallet. That was the wallet. <laughs> Hang it on, here he shock. comes. Hey, mate. Can you hear us? <laughs> he can't hear us. Uh, he looks what? good, though. He does. We'll see if we can get him working again. I don't know if I've got him. Uh, yeah, he's got, he should be able to hear us. Definitely. Um, I don't know why he can't hear us, but let's see if I can fix it. One sec. Blah, blah, blah. He can't hear us. Why can't he hear us? New take audio. He should be able to hear us. Uh, okay, we'll have to sort him out in a sec. I'll, um, I'll chat to him. My end. I'll just tell him my end. Give him a sec and we'll sort him out. Cool. Alright, so he knows what's going on. Okay, so we've got to keep going because we've got the next section which is the news. So let's roll the stinger. Alright, welcome to the news. Now, this is um, basically to do with everything sort of synths and tech and everything that comes up during the week. Now, we've probably had about two weeks worth of this, but to be honest, I kind of... Um, I kind of think, you know, the news travels pretty quick and I just don't really want to hang on to stuff. So we'll start with this one. The first item off the, the ranks is, of course, the um, the news that Behringer are releasing the Wasp Deluxe, which is basically, um, it's an analog mono synth that they um, are copying from an old 19, late 1970s famous synth called the Wasp. And... Um, what can we tell you about it? It's got dual oscillators, um, the digital oscillators in this. Um, pure analog signal path though, from the oscillators out. So the voltage control filter and the amp. Um, three variable oscillator shapes. Multi-mode um, filter with low, high band and notch modes. And the LFO also offers six different waveform shapes, including sample and hold and noise. And noise generator, of course. And they're gonna be about 319 euros. So um, that's basically that. Let's just have a quick look at what these look like. Um, always forget what button to press. There we go. Let's have a quick look. This is bearing his actual video. The iconic British black and yellow analog synthesizer came out in 1978 with its distinctive and dirty sound being a strong characteristic of the new wave movement of the early 80s. Notable artists that used it are Eurythmics, Jean-Michel Jarre, Nick Rode, Vince Clark and the 808 State. To so I thought I'd pause it there because she craps on a bit, but let's just, <laughs> let's go into where she actually plays it. <laughs> Anyway, I will link that video into the um, you know the, the channel description later on. You guys can check it out. It's pretty popular that video anyway. So I'm probably sure most of you have already seen it. But I think to note is the the filter on that is pretty cool. It's very resonant and um, yeah, quick reaction from our guys here. Let me get rid of the wasp um, image first. There we go. Who wants to go first? Who likes the idea of the wasp? Um, yeah, I've well, I've got the wasp filter in the in the modular uh, from Dolpha, 
which is nice and sort of dirty and squelchy. I like the look of it, I've got to admit. The thing is, I need to know what Behringer I'm not going to make so I can be a bit different. Um, I, I, yeah, I, I like it, but um, this, this Behringer, <laughs> cert, certainly whipping a lot of stuff out, I'll tell you that. But, I mean, it'd be great to take on stage or something because, it's, like I say, it's about 299 something like that. So you don't need yeah. to bother about taking a real walk out. 319 euros, that one. Pinky, what about you? What did you think? Yeah, I'm with Darren. I mean, you, how many announcements a week are they making? But uh, yeah, <laughs> really glad they've made it. At what point, which ones do you get and which ones don't you get? You can't have them all. You'd never get anything done. But yeah, I like it. Fine. I'm glad they made it. But yeah, uh, yeah. It's, it's super cool what they're doing. I really do like what they're doing. So yeah. it is, and I th um, we haven't sorted out the. There's an audio issue with Skype, so um, we'll get Darren's um, opinion about. It. I don't know how many seconds it's going to take before he he'll catch on. We'll just pause for a second. Yeah, I can hear you guys. I might I might have to call back. But we are you able to hear me? Yeah, we can hear you fine. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty live. I know, now I'm hearing a really bad delay. Um, All right. Yeah, so... yeah. Um, I, I agree with what you guys were just saying that there's way way too many options right now. And this week I've been looking at the the RD8, the 808 clone, and just gassing so badly for it. And I've got to discipline myself to work with what I've got. Work with I've master this. Spend some more time with the Electribe and and get this running better. I, I wanted the RD808. The only um, back, back way I you. got out of it. Sorry, the, sorry. The only way I got out of it, Dazza, was thinking about the cowbell and how much <laughs> I don't like the cowbell. And, and that's what I've concentrated on all week is I don't want it because I <laughs> hate the cowbell. So that's the only way I've dealt with it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'm sure there'd be limitations uh, once once you've got it. Yeah, fabulous. All right, cool. So we've got some more news to to get into. So let's go back to the news thingamy over here. See, that's all the technical term thingamy. Um, I'm all the technical terms. All right, let's go. Bang. Next item off the uh, news is the Gothamans Zybraz. Yes, you you heard it right. And I probably said said it wrong. If you're um, if you're Danish or from Denmark, you'll probably tell me that I don't know how to pronounce anything. Anyway, it's a 24 voice resonator polysynth. Yes, I'm reading this because I'm so good. Um, it's actually probably a VA, but they don't like calling it a VA. It's got two parts. Core is based on a resonator oscillator derived from the LD3. Um, someone will tell me what the LD3 is. I actually don't know what that is, so um, someone will tell me off. Oscillator waveforms morph from sine to triangle, saw to square, and to a feed wave. And someone might want to tell me what a feed wave is. That sounds pretty interesting. I'm guessing it's this next thing that I'm about to say. So basically, there's a unique signal path which goes from the resonator back into Feedback. itself. So I would say that's what the feed wave is. And then you can actually um, route all that through the feed the filter and the FX and the modulations and all that sort of stuff. So yeah, I do actually have a video for this and I'll be honest with you, um, I actually haven't watched it yet. So this is going to be a first for all of us who have never seen it. So let's roll the vid. Bang. Hope it doesn't buffer. Let's go. I think it does. Yeah, here we go. We got sound. This will probably blow out your ears. Shall we?
I'm doing that on purpose, everyone, just because we don't want to be sitting here watching someone else's video. And don't forget, you can go and watch this video and on your own. It'll be linked in below in the description. So that is the, um, let me say it again, Goth Armand's Zybraz. Um, it's one of those voiceover guys with a deep voice. <laughs> like you hear on the radio when they say, you know, someone's announcing. I did it really bad. Anyway, so that is that. Um, now, what was next? What was next? It's Oh, that's right. The other bit. <laughs> yes. Okay, here we go. Bang. So everyone's probably seen this. This is another announcement from Beringer. Um, no, this is not the Beringer show. But I thought I'd bring it up because, um, you know, we kind of hear stuff all the time from them and you don't know whether they're crapping on or not. But anyway, this is a product that they've already launched, obviously, and they're saying that there's some secret compartment in the back of this and they're not telling us much. And there's another graphic that came up that had three of the letter, you know, the logo of the Ds on it. Anyway, so... <clears throat> I posted on a couple of well-known forums that um, in the software that I got given from Beringer in the dev by the dev team, there was a poly version of the D. And so I know there's code in there for a poly D. I don't know if this is to do with poly D, if it's, if the fact that there was four Ds in the graphic they released mean it's got a four voice synthesizer or not. But why don't we check if it does actually have a secret compartment because and I need to take that graphic off because I'm so good at doing streams. There we go. Such a professional. But here is a Behringer Model D, right? And I can, they never showed the back of that in the video, but I can show you that there is no secret compartment in here. All of this stuff, you can see it's all normal, right? And definitely no secret compartment. And to prove that there's no secret compartment in here, this thing, don't forget, it's Euro Rackable. All right, so that's the inside of it, all right? Hang on, let me get this. I'm trying to juggle everything here. Uh, which way do I go? That way. So that's the inside of it. There's absolutely nothing secret about that in there. And you can see definitely inside there's no secret compartment. So I've just busted that myth. And I don't know if they're talking about inside on this. But, but gee, don't, it, there could be a secret chip that Yuli's got a button on his phone that, that at a specific point in the future, he just activates it. All right, maybe. Okay, so the only thing that I found that's kind of interesting is, where is it? Up this corner here. There's a little plug here that, that I'm not using. These plugs on this side get used. So that one's the Eurorack power. And the one, the white one there is the actual plug that you saw that was inside the case. So that one there, um, it's labeled X22 and it's got two pins on it. So I don't know, maybe that might be something, who knows? It's actually, it's near the main output part of the circuit. So yeah, anyway, if that really pisses people off that I busted them, <laughs> I don't care. That was my purpose. <laughs> Anyway, quick uh, comment what, from were you, you guys. Expecting, <laughs> were you expecting to find like a, a, a little starship in it, like a little <laughs> I was, toy? I was interested, yeah, I opened it up. And and went, it's... Let's have a look. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> um, who would be the most devastated by this news? Anyone in the chat? Let's have a look if anyone's in the chat's devastated. Oh, dearie me. I think most people would probably be in agreement. Um, but I'm wondering, yeah, this most, is really most of this is Renza said, I wonder how many people have taken it apart, just like I did. I'm going to add that to the queue. There we go. <laughs> but I, would, I would have thought most people who've got one would know that there's no secret compartment. They're not going to launch um, a Mark II of it, are they? Yeah, they, they could. With a secret um, compartment. Yeah. No, they could. That's not, I don't see him doing that to his customers. He's got a really good customer base. Why does he need to release a Mark II? Where he could release firmware, you know. Well, why, why is he why saying would that, you do that secret compartment? Yeah. Well, because you wouldn't. But have you not seen? Have you not seen his latest? <laughs> did you Did you watch the beginning of the Wasp video? <laughs> yeah, it was. A bit have, weird. have you any? I mean, well, yeah. <laughs> come on, the guy. Uh, let's be honest. I, I'm I'm liking it. I'm thinking this is the best fun 
we've had a since had <laughs> with advertising ever. <laughs> I mean, yeah. you know, we don't know, but he's going to give you something for free. It makes me almost want to go and buy one just to see what I get. <laughs> That's kind of, you know what I mean? So I don't know what it, do you know what it'll be? Any, any ideas? Well, the um, Daz has just disappeared again, so we'll have to sort him out. Um, so the other thing is, is it could possibly be the... Um, so we know that it polychains, right? So we know that you can get uh, up to 16 of these and polychain them together. So maybe he's released a box which has got the voice chips in it. And he's then given us the ability to plug that voice you know can you just imagine a basically a dumb box that doesn't do anything it just literally has voice chips in it and you can plug that into your model d you know that you've already got and then all of a sudden now you've got a polysynth with extra voices so it could be an, uh, could be a box with three voices in it and then you've got so that, you know the, remember there's three oscillators per voice so there will be technically you know, if, if it was, because I'm basing it based on those four Ds that they did in the graphic. You know, if they did that, you'd have a little sound box module. And that, some synths have done that, like the Ob uh, Oberheims did that with the Sem. Um, they actually released like bo you know modules that you could upgrade your Sem on. So yeah, um, let me just um, while we're talking, let me just get a bit of an opinion from from you inky and i'm just going to see if i can tech support um i'm Dazza. good no i'm good now oh Daz is good now yeah i'm back all right we'll get an opinion from inky anyway because i know she wants to give one <laughs> well just based on that what i just said a little module possibly with voices in it yeah that that sounds good um i didn't think about the four d's but yeah yeah to make it yeah four three or four voice i get that yeah. Yeah. And that way you're not that way you're not sort of pissing anyone off by releasing another box that everyone has I to do, go and buy. I don't think I don't think why would he release a Mark II yep. when he can release any synthesizer on the planet plus a mixer plus a whatever he wants to do in, within a week he's not going to do that. He's just about got every synth even the people who didn't like are starting to warm. So he he's not that stupid. He's yeah. he's I don't think he'd do that. I think he's going to give us something for free, which is what all the good companies are doing now. You yeah. know, they're really trying to, you know, make everyone happy. Should we see what the chat is saying? Let's have a quick look. Yeah. So um, <laughs> that comment below me just there is, this is Renza said, I just flagged it because I thought it was funny. Everyone's who owns a, <laughs> a Model D, it's probably taken apart just like I just did then. Um, but yeah, you've got, uh, you know, quite a lot of people making their little points about it. Um, yeah, I don't really know what else it could possibly be. Um, there's not been no, uh, really over any suggestions in there. Dazza, what do you think it might be, mate? Is it wrong that I was hoping you'd find some LSD in there, coded on? <laughs> 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 We'd all be buying it then. But they call that the lick mod. Yeah, yeah. You, you've <laughs> got to heat it to a certain temperature. <laughs> That's when the oscillators don't go out of tune, and then you can lick it. Yeah. <laughs> then everything goes out of tune. <laughs> then everything Whoa. just floats around, yeah. That's it. Okay, so there is some... Um, okay, there's some more news. And Inky, I'm going to give you the floor with this one because um, I think this one's very, very interesting. So, Inky, um, do you want to talk a little bit about the... Not so much of an NPC Live um, NPC X update. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So um, something was leaked uh, yesterday morning on Luke YouTube from Akai, which showed Ableton, uh, the NPC Live working with Ableton, um, and you could see the clip launching on the NPC Live screen and. Uh, use it all, fully integratable with Ableton. Um, and the video I saw wasn't by, it was the archive video that someone else had stolen and published. Mm. And he released it and everybody saw it. Uh, then his video mysteriously disappeared. 
But by this time, it caused a lot of debate because people who wanted the MPC just an update for the standalone weren't happy. And other people were delighted going, oh, my goodness, I can use it with Ableton. Um, and everybody was really het up. But, you know, they keep giving us stuff for free. And even though I don't use Ableton, I was I was pretty wowed about it. I was like, wow, that's that's really cool. You know, I, I told Darren about it. But um, it's interesting that it's just being put out there maybe as a tester of when they're going to release it. I don't know. But it's odd that it's all gone down and even that video has been taken down. Mm. So, but it's pretty yeah. exciting if you use Ableton. Yeah. So Inky actually told me about it and I had no idea. And I actually went and watched the whole video from the start to the finish. Um, so basically the update was called 2.7, I think. And um, it was mainly all about Ableton and you could use your MPC Live or X as a controller and you could use it to control the clip launching side of it. You could use it to control the um, arrangement view. You could use it to control the mixer side of it. So it was all, there was all sort of big segments of the video that went in to show how each one of those sort of elements worked. And um, then it went into this little kind of networking side of things where I thought this was interesting. So they um, are saying that you can buy a USB network adapter, right? And um, the USB network adapter is just a little, <clears throat> you can buy them from computer shops, right? And it's just a USB and on the other side of the USB plug is like a standard <laughs> ethernet and you can chuck a, a network cable in. And then they're saying inside the um, MPC, you could go in and set up a network address and then you could link to your network and then Ableton could, could talk over for high speed networks. Um, so there was that, and that was kind of, you know, I've never heard of that before. And then the next thing was that they were saying you could do the same with their Wi-Fi. Well, it's already got Wi-Fi in it, so we know that that works. But then they were talking about, towards the end, do you remember, Inky, towards the end of the video, they were talking about um, how you could, um, you, you can switch between, you know, standalone, basically. You're still So you're still in standalone mode on your MPC, and you can switch between, um, so you could play something in Ableton and then it would be using Ableton Link, which is already there, we know, but you could then go in into your MPC and launch clips and launch tracks and all that sort of stuff. And then you could switch between the two and then the, it became this sort of box which gelled with, you know, without any latency and it was just kind of very, very seamless. And that's where I sort of started to think, hmm, that's actually pretty cool. So um, in terms of the other stuff, it was all really just what Push does already. Um, but probably more basically and then the stuff towards the end of that video which you know towards network connectivity and very very low latency and basically having the MPC as a standalone piece of hardware also integrating with Ableton so you know I can see people who are running laptop DJ type setups who hate how their laptops crash in the middle of you know gigs they could have their MPC which doesn't crash and they could sort of recover from a crash on a laptop. They've still got tracks and MIDI and stuff like that running on their MPC. So to me, I thought that update was really interesting. And why they pulled it, I don't know. Um, maybe someone in the chat might know about it. Um, what, while we've got the chat, I just want to quickly bring this one up because Axelsoft said something pretty funny. He goes, uh, Behringer are releasing a clone of their own Model D, causing the time to fall back on itself and thus mm. warp. <laughs> oh, that was good. So definitely worth a definitely worth a play that one. Well done, mate. All right. So, um, Darren, haven't heard from you. What do you think about the? I mean, I know you don't have a um, MPC live, but I know you're an Ableton guy. Um, did you actually get to see the video at all? Did Inky would have yeah, seen I did. It I watched. Yeah. Yeah, I watched the video, and I thought it was like, like I say, it's really good. Um, you could, you know, if you was an Ableton user and you was you wanted to use that live, it'd be really good to have, it'd be almost like your, uh, your archive would be um, a backup as well. Like you said, if anything crashed down, you still got pretty much um, in the in the archive for still performing wise while, you, while you've got your crash. So I quite liked it. I, liked, I was like, I was really interested, but like you say, it just suddenly went down. <laughs> yeah, interesting. Yeah. I don't know if um, Dazza, I don't know if you saw it. Did you see it, mate? I'm not sure. No. Nah. 
No, I completely missed that. I've had a busy week. Yeah, that's that's fine. Um, mm-hmm. So yeah, I mean, any, anyway, it's it's I, um, yeah, Enki. What what I what I find interesting is a lot of people are like complaining about this going, Oh, it's become a controller. And I don't use Ableton at all. So for me, this is completely useless. Yep. But when I bought the MPC, it, it didn't do any of the things that it does now. All I wanted was like a couple of synths and an ARP, which they've given us and they've given us step automation and, you know, Ableton link, everything you could want. And mm. all these updates have been for free. So even though this is never going to help me, except that link, which I feel might work with the force as well, because that's got um, an internet cable. So yes, I'm wondering it does, if it'll yeah. link up with that. Yeah. Um, That'd be cool. But, but really, this update really doesn't apply to me. But I'm still happy. I think, yep. great. And also, at Akai, they release... If they release a big update, they won't tell you. They'll give you an overview, and then you'll they'll give you specific parts. So mm. this could only be one part of the update. Yeah, I am wondering whether it's been leaked on purpose uh, by someone. Just wondering what people would think. Yeah, to get some feedback. Yeah, I was. Yeah, I actually posted on one of the main forums um, what I thought about the update. I mean, obviously, I said something similar to what I just said before. But there was one other comment that I added, and I thought I'd mention it now. I've been asking Akai, and they've been saying to me, yes, it's possible, that we really need the NPCs and even the Force to take MIDI input, right? So it already does that. But what I mean is it needs to be able to assign a device that you bring in through MIDI to a specific track. So that you say if you've got a keyboard um, and you might have another controller, because it's got USB ports, you can plug a USB hub into this thing. You could have multiple different things coming in. And at the moment, you can't assign inputs to a specific MIDI channel or track. So I'm really, really hoping that they will do that soon. And the other one that I'd like them to do is um, the same thing, but over Bluetooth. So then you can use things like those Yamaha Bluetooth adapters. Um, and then you've got wireless MIDI controlling your MPC. Wouldn't that be awesome? So you're standing, like guys like Michael B, who's on our channel a lot. You've known if you've ever watched some of his live performances, he's a bass player. One of the things he would love is the ability to stand away from something and not have to touch it. And if you can do that with Bluetooth or some sort of wireless technology, um, it's already got it in there. It's already got Bluetooth. So, you know, this sort of stuff, once they enable that, Inky, that would be massive because that then brings your performance to the next level. You know, you're sort of not necessarily grounded on that. You can step back and wearable MIDI controls or, you know, let you, let your mind go crazy. What do you think? Yeah. Yeah, we need multiple MIDI in, don't we? And disc streaming. But, um, yeah. Disc streaming, yeah, like that's the other it, one, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. It, it, image and heap, like. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be great. That'd, that'd be, cool, be great. Yeah. But, yeah. But, I, you know, I think they've come a long way since I bought it. So I'm, I'm pretty happy where they've gone. Um, oh, absolutely. Those updates are free, but, yeah. aren't they? So... Yeah, you know, every update's been complain. free. So, and anybody who moans, you know, about it for free after you bought it and you never thought you were going to get it, well, I don't know what to say, really. Yeah, yeah. All right, we we'll we need to move along. We've still got another segment to go, and that one's got a few things in it as well. Last, the last thing in the news, I guess, it's just really just more of a local news, like to do with my channel, and that is that um, I've actually put up a page on my website. Um, and it's called ramsey.com forward slash live. Now, if you guys are ever wondering when my stream is on, I'm going to be publishing it via that because sometimes it's a bit hard to keep, keep track of YouTube and all their weird links. So you can see that's the latest one. So as I do, a, I mean, I do a stream every Saturday. Sometimes I don't, like last week, but it'll be on there. And also what's good about it too is you can, you can actually link into the uh, playlist of previous episodes if you ever want to go and check them out. So that's on my website, renzi.com forward slash live. It's just an easy way for you guys to find stuff. So there you go. So next one up is our segment called eBay scammers or bad deals or 
not so good prices. So we'll call it Price Watch. Yeah. All right. So let's get stuck into that. Now I do have a couple. You know what's been happening, guys? This is actually really funny. Every single one of these now has been coming across my own personal feed. So I'm not having to go on rely on other people to post these on forums anymore. These are literally coming across my own feeds. And this first one is, I can't remember if I've shown this or not, but this is the um, another uh, EMS Synthi. Um, this one's a Mark one with extensive mods from 1971. Jeez, that's an old synth, isn't it? Anyway, you can get that for 28,878 thousand uh australian dollars which is probably about twenty two thousand ish i don't know i'm not very good at math us that's a lot of money for a monophonic three oscillator synth isn't it guys i think we talked about another one of these a few weeks ago there you go that's they're popping up now i got a feeling i'm seeing vcs's and and synthes if they're popping up on ebay now I reckon there's a VCS3 about to come out of uh, Beringer. There has to be because you don't see these things. So there's that could be a little, a, it could be a little thing anyway. Anyway, moving right along. If you guys are wondering what this segment's about, it's just if we find interesting prices and stuff. This one was brilliant. <laughs> oh guys, okay. This one was super super funny. Okay, can you guys see? I'll make this full screen for you. <laughs> Roland. S50. Now, do you guys remember we were talking about the S50 a couple of weeks ago? We we're talking about the W30 and the S50. They're both sampling keyboards. What's wrong with this picture? Can you anyone pick it? <laughs> it's a it's it's a, it's a PSR. It's a Yamaha keyboard in the picture. Yeah. And it's one of those kitty ones, you know, the basic ones that you buy <laughs> for a hundred bucks at the local um, terrible music shop. Anyway, so this one's a <laughs> Roland S50. Oh, jeez. Anyway, I just thought that one came across my own feed because I was looking to see how much S50s were. Here you go. Interesting, hey. All right, next one is... Oh, okay, yes. And this this is just to prove that it was a Yamaha. <laughs> so that, as you sort of, you know, you scroll across the images on the, on the bottom there, the, <laughs> you can't get any more clever than that. Oh, jeez. Yeah, but anyway. that's, that's just the outer case because they've really got an, S, an S50 inside. <laughs> it's it's a scam. <laughs> that one is truly a scam, guys. So we've actually found one. All right, so while we were doing all of our, you know, um, checking deals out and things like that, I do keep track of one particular synth. And I do this on purpose because it's easy to keep track of. There's a fair few out there. And that is the... SH101, and I don't know if you guys who follow me will know that I do a price every month. Now we're up to November, so I've been doing it for a while now. Um, so there you go, you can see a bit of a trend happening. Um, so the blue is eBay, and the you know the orange is Reverb, and then obviously the little line there is Average. So you gotta do that in Excel, is a bit of fun. Um, now how I do the prices is it's based on an average, so um, it works that way. Now, just so you guys know, you can actually go in uh, to places like Reverb, and I did this on my phone, and I did this a couple of days ago. If, you look, if you've got to log into Reverb, you can actually go in and find out the price history of something. Now, this is the SH101 used price history, and you can see there's transactions underneath, and they do a little sort of plot graph. So you can see it's kind of popping all over the place there, isn't it? But also the conditions are popping all over the place too. So I think it's very... Like if we were to grab very good conditions and then sort of look at them as a as a sample, they're a pretty similar price between twelve, thirteen hundred, and it's and it's staying pretty consistent. So if we go back to our our graph that we had there, you can see reverb prices stay pretty consistent. Although I will admit that it, it's had uh, a couple of drops lately. So in September it dropped quite considerably. And in November it dropped compared to October. So anyway, there you go. Does that interest anyone? I don't know, but that's that's <laughs> that's all it is. <laughs> Any comments from you guys? Used Wait, gear? It seems to be it seems to be sort of keeping a rough um average price considering the um the Behringer clone came out. It's not uh, I am there, can't I? Um it's it's not it's not dropped completely, has it? It's not 
fell away. Hmm. And then, you know, obviously, we should we should mention too. So I was drinking water then. Um, Darren is actually an owner of a SH one hundred and one. So, um, you know, it, it's kind of cool to watch something. I know you didn't pay those prices for yours, so you know. No, I paid more like the Berwick Clone price. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what I wanted to pay, but <laughs> I was too late. Anyway, um, okay, so what are we up to? Jeez, this is taking a while to get through this stream tonight. Um, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so where we're up to now is our um, our segment, which is the main topic, which is. Um, gear that we uh do i diy or projects or anything like that i don't know if you guys watched the stream a few months ago i actually did um talk about this thing the me blip um the through midi kit the through five it's called and um and i, I don't know if i mentioned it or not but i actually bought one and i'm just going to turn the soldering on i've got the soldering iron here uh nice little wet thing i've got some solder a uh, bit of gear. I'm going to talk a little bit about this because I get messages from people who watch my YouTube videos and they say to me, Rands, I just don't like building stuff. It's too scary. I don't don't know what I'm doing. It's, you know, it's kind of stupid. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you guys this. Something's beeping at me. All right. Cool. There you go. Sorry about all the rattly noise. So there you go. This is what happens when you get these little kits. Sometimes they come, you know, look, there's another view for you guys. You can check that one out there, okay? So they come with a whole bunch of components. This one's a really basic kit to do. And, you know, you've got to work out how to put this together. Now, sometimes they come with manuals, sometimes they don't. Sometimes you've got to go online and check it out. But this one should be pretty straightforward, okay? Alright, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to build this thing in front of you guys. Um, but I promise I'm not going to make it the whole stream about you watching me build it. I'm just going to build it whilst we chat about other things. Okay, so this is what we see. What have we got? One, two, three, four, five. So there's your in outputs and there's your input. Actually, the other way around. Alright, so they're all going to have to be plugged in. There's a USB power adapter there that's going to have to be plugged in. And once I've soldered those, and it's not going to take me long, there's only a couple of solder things, we can uh, check it out and see if it works. All right, so there's that. Now, what I thought I'd do is I'd throw this out to everyone here who um, is a little bit sort of shy about doing projects. So um, let's go to the, you guys there. I know, Dazza, you. I don't want to drop you in it, mate, but you said to me yeah, that yeah. You, you don't really do, do this sort of stuff. And no. I, wanted, I wanted to get your feedback as to as to why and um, what your thoughts are. So we'll just, we'll go to you for a sec. Yeah, yeah, I want to be creating. I like to be doing music and anything like that takes me away from it. Uh, one of the first things I did when I left high school was an associate diploma in electrical engineering. So I, I've studied the basics of circuitry and soldering. So I do have the skills, but um, I just tend to be not much of a craftsman and I get sold everywhere and, and I end up with a worse product than I started with usually. I think this is going to be interesting watching you do this and running the live stream at the same time. You've got, you've got be, a few... It'll probably crash and burn, mate, let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> You're just adding to the, to the list of things you need to do all, all simultaneously. Yeah. Um, but no, that's all good. But maybe I can have cool, a live cool. jam while, while you're doing that. I'll play some music yeah, while yeah. you're... This we is soldering, a, soldering music. We don't have a jammer of the week this week. Um, so, you know, we can definitely do that. But, um, <laughs> okay. Yeah. So I've still got, I'm still going to have to remember to, to cut to all of us. So while we're still doing, I'm, I'm actually still putting this thing together. So here I am. Going to play some music? Yeah, yeah, go for it. Um, I'm just putting all these bits in, right? Nothing's soldered just yet. So, and guys who are in the chat, let us know what you guys think as well about doing this sort of stuff, if you're scared about doing it. Um, okay, so what I'm doing here is, all I'm doing is I'm just lining all these um, MIDI ports up, and um, I'm going to turn this thing upside down. I'm going to start soldering them in. I don't know how Can I just... 
gonna go. Can I just ask? Does it work to have music in the background? Were you? Was everyone else able to hear that? Um. Yeah. Yeah, we could hear it. I could hear it. That that failed on me. (laughs) That wasn't a good idea. All right, what we'll do? We'll try it with. I was getting ahead of myself. We'll try it with a couple. No pressure, Rands. We can do this. Alright. Never ever do stuff on live streams that you're uncomfortable doing. Pro tip. We can zoom in, can we? Too much for you guys? No, no, keep going, mate. It's awesome. Oh, cool. All right. That's mostly the Electrive MX. My fingers are all sweaty. Live on TV. Soldering under pressure. Consciousness and thought. Technology assisted consciousness and thought. Alright, we got one here. This is something that we call technology assisted consciousness and thought. Technology assisted consciousness and thought. How you doing? Uh, We're going good. We got one one down? Focus. 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 Nah, it doesn't want to focus on me. Move it down a bit. Nah, it's alright, I'll zoom in. Okay, so what I want to show is. See, it's not focusing, eh? There we go. Yay. Yep. Touchdown. All right. Now, I'm not the best. So- I'm not sort of claiming I'm the best solder in the world or anything like that. I'm actually really crap at this, okay? So having said that, there's no reason why you guys, I'm not saying anyone in particular, I'm not pointing fingers or anything, but there's no <laughs> reason why you guys can't have a crack at doing this sort of stuff. So um, we'll keep. I'll Still keep gonna- going with it. I'm still going to send you that delay pedal. <laughs> yeah. But what I thought I'd do is we'll get you guys talking while we're at it too because, you know, this is a stream we need to talk. And I love the music too, Dazza. That was awesome. Um, oh, thanks. Right. So just while we're talking, I want to show you guys what I mean by projects and um, some of the ones that I've built over the years. So I've shown you guys heaps of times this thing, the MIDI Pro. Okay. I built that from scratch. Um, that was all soldering. So there's a MIDI Bro. Um, this one here is like a little oscilloscope that I've shown before on my stream, and I've soldered all that together. That's an eBay sort of jobber. It is related to synths because I use it as a audio oscilloscope. That's my little my little hack there. Oh. Um, can we see so that, that in action? There, yeah, we can get that going. Um, maybe not this stream, but we can definitely get it going in another one. Um, Excellent. Because I need to grab the cable for it. Uh, this is something that I built on a stream. I've probably shown you guys this before. So this was my, um, this you'll like this one, Inky. This is my MIDI dinned TRS hack, right? And because you've got two different types. You've got one that works on the Akai and the um, Arturia, the and, and then you've got another one yeah, that works yeah. on the Novation and a um, few of the others, right? And that's what that switch does. It literally just switches it from one to the other. And this was just a really simple wiring project there. Really easy yeah. to make. The good thing about this is um, it means that you don't need any 
you don't need to buy any special cables. You just put your existing cables in there and it converts a standard MIDI DIN into a TRS and then it converts it to A or B. So um, that was a little project. There's a video on my channel for that as cool. well. And I've got that, if you guys are watching the stream, don't go running off and watch it, but you'll see it's in the letter I. I've already linked it in the letter I. And this one is, this is just really just to give you guys, you know, a little bit of taste what I mean by projects and that. So this here is a um, Arduino, Arduino Uno. Packers. Yeah, yeah. Right? Almost. Anyway, Arduino Uno, and on top of this is what they call a USB shield. Right, you just buy that as a separate thing. It just literally just plugs on top. I haven't actually pushed it all the way down yet. Okay, and what you can use this for is um, you plug your Arduino into your into your PC. You pro put some programming code into it, and now I've got myself a USB, and then with a bit of wiring out of these plugs, I can then make it, you know, connect up to a MIDI DIN, and I can make myself a USB to MIDI host without actually having to use a PC. So if you've got a USB controller and you need to convert it to, to um, MIDI, this is a little project. And I'll, I'll do this one very soon on the channel. It's not something that's original, people have done it before, but I just thought, I know there's people that love this sort of stuff. So there's that. Cool, all right, now, Dazza. Um, I've already asked you, I'm gonna ask Darren actually. Darren, yep. Eurorack, mate. Have you done any projects for Hello. Eurorack? Um, no, I haven't. Um, you have anything I've planned? looked at no, uh, main reason is a bit like Dazza, really, because it's time. Um, I don't, I wouldn't mind doing them, uh, because I was going to do the Turing machine, uh, build a Turing machine for the Euro rack, but um, it means spending a bit of time out of not doing music, and it's like mm. so. Yeah. I wouldn't. I wouldn't say I wouldn't do it uh, because I am constructing the left side of the studio, uh, but it's not exactly um, yeah. soldering or anything like that. Asking uh, you, so asking you I'm to do actually right now. Is a bit, bit forward, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, but yeah, I wouldn't say I wouldn't do it. Uh, definitely. Cool, cool. All right. So, um, if you were to do it, what would you do? Like a um, like a simple sort of mixer type project, or Something more complex or what? Uh, I think it'll probably be something like the Turing machine for your rack or a your rack uh, module. That or a bit like you're doing, like you've got like your MIDI boxes or things like that. Anything yep. where it'll come in handy. I need I need to do something, and it'll be easier to can uh, build one to your sort of requirements rather than try to you know find um, a box out there that'll do what you want. As long as it's not dead complicated, I'm not talking like a yep. a big uh, Apollo, you know, <laughs> <laughs> or a um, but uh, mutable instruments, yeah. um, you know, clouds or something. Yeah, as long as it's you know, if I, if I when I set this section up and I need to come up with some sort of MIDI through boxing um, or something like that, then yeah, I'd probably have a go at building it myself because yeah. I can build it into the you can build it into where you want it rather than a box and then try and fit it into somewhere. Yeah, absolutely. Um, what about you, Inky? Are you interested in any of this sort of stuff, or is it too geeky? No, no, I've got A level physics. So, oh, I didn't know uh, that. No, well, yeah, I've got A level physics and maths. So, uh, anyway, yeah, I used to fix a lot of stuff. Um, so, I fixed mixers. Uh, that I couldn't afford to get the crossfader and found the right impedance and homage. And if they didn't fit, I'd make them fit. Um, so I've done a lot of soldering and fixing, but like the other two, I did look at the Aerobus kit and then I just couldn't be bothered. <laughs> but I can show you the hardest thing I've ever soldered in my life. Yeah. Which is, um, hold on. Mm, what is that? You, you see it's that? A, yeah, yeah. What is that? It's a rec. It's a record needle, right? It's oh, a record yeah. needle head. And what happened was is is, um, that, a, is that a Stanton a, needle? Yeah, yeah. So what I did is I I replaced it. I think they were autophone, or I replaced it, 
and all the little wires like uh, came off got so I had to reattach the wires to the clips that were still attached to the other bit of the head and it took me hours and bits of cardboard woven but it's lasted since the mid 90s so I'm proud of that That's so cool. yeah is that, that Phantom 500? Yep. Nice. And I've got I've got some new needles in a case, which were the last lot that were made in uh, America as well, because they moved then. Ah. Yeah. Yeah. I've I've got a, yeah, yeah though, that's what's on my deck. One yeah. of them's got a bit of cardboard jammed in the head as well to make it more level. But <laughs> yeah, you know. So I've done my bit, and I do look at the kits like the Airbus, and I've, I've thought about it, but. I guess, you know, some of us are just yeah. a bit... I forgot about them, Amazing. actually, Inky. Yeah, the, the Erebus kits. Uh, the little the little Erebus, I fancied that, but I'm not sure you can still get it. And the new one, I forget what it's called. It's only about £165, I yeah. think. Yeah, but then it, it's just... I, I would do it, yeah. but I, you know, it's, it's going to take a whole that... evening. And you, I've got to go and yeah, find exactly. soldering iron. I've got. I don't even know if the soldering iron works. I think the last time it didn't, so that means I've got to go to Argos and find another one. And then, and it, it's only little things. But you're like, oh. Speaking oh, of speaking of little things, I, the one, the one project I could get, I need to get done is the the Volker snare, the Volker Beats snare mod, which has got a tiny tiny location for the capacitor get to go in. So you need like a really thin chip on the soldering iron. And I've had a several attempts at this. I've bought two types of capacitors and I just haven't had the confidence to actually go through and do it. I've I've offered for friends to do it. I've got an engineer in Canberra I was going to send it to. It's just one of these projects I've just hesitated on for like a, about a year and a half now. <laughs> just I want to fix the snare up. I want to try the snare mod, but I just haven't done it. Is it and, a capacitor uh, or a resistor? I thought it was a resistor. It's a capacitor. I bought the one. I can't tell you the size of it, but yeah, the, the, you, there's you can try it. Like there's two, but um, the idea, I guess, is to experiment with it. But it's like they literally left the the capacitor out when they when they built it because there's a spot there for it. Yeah, yeah, it's really crunchy, isn't it? Be good to have the option to switch between both of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You could do that. You could make a switch on the I back could send of it. it. I, I could send it to you, Inky, and you could do it for me. I'll pay you. But while you're doing it, you could uh, also you could also add the extra MIDI. <laughs> no, <thank couldn't> you? <laughs> Isn't there an extra MIDI port on there that you could add? Yeah, there's a whole bunch of things you could add, like a volume control for the for the snare, I think, as well. Um, the, the, one, another project I, I would have been interested in is the Moog Workstat, which I think you've got a copy copy of their ends and there's a bit yep. of soldering involved with the workstat isn't there no there was no soldering no you just put it together yeah yeah it was clips. all just yeah it was all clicked together yeah. uh -huh. so you know, this is how much i've done so far do, 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 do. see so, <laughs> it's all doable soldering with friends yeah soldering, <laughs> soldering is for nerds anyway we'll keep going um so i mean i can that's the thing i can multitask and the other thing too is like when I do this, it's it's very therapeutic actually soldering. I find it very very pretty. <laughs> That's the fumes. <laughs> yeah yeah yeah. I've got a little fan blowing, so it's all good. <laughs> but I will admit, okay. So if anyone is actually being serious here, if anyone actually not wants to know a little bit more about this, I recommend always a. Gosh, no focusing issues tonight. Um, come on, focus. Is it going? It's never going to focus on me, is it? 0.5 millimeter. I don't know if it's ever going to show you a focus on that. But there, 0.5 millimeter. Always use a really thin um, bit of solder. Um, ah. The thicker your solder, it'll just like it'll just put crap right. everywhere. And the other thing too is your actual soldering iron as well. I always recommend get one of those ones that you you can vary the temperature on, and the tip. Go with the chisel tip. If you're doing through hole soldering, because yeah. um, because that tip is flat and it sits on the circuit board, you can heat up 
the pin that comes through at the same time and you just rest it on the on the board so yeah. like this you kind of you're putting your stuff through right and then you're resting that on the board like that so it um it just makes it easier to solder but if you ever want to know who's done a really good video on how to solder uh, is it, it's actually an Australian guy called uh, Dave Jones. He has this channel called EV Blog, and I think it, if you ever Google how to solder, I think it's like the number one video in the world watched on how to solder. So uh, definitely worth checking out. All right, so I'll keep I'll keep going with this because it's fun, and I've only got three more to go. Um, so yeah, <laughs> what are the guys in chat saying? Someone want to keep an eye on chat? That they want me to play more music. Why don't we do that? Play more music. <laughs> Let me do the other the other pattern I've been working on today. Does anyone else want to want to play? Anyone else got anything set up? Come on, let's do it. <laughs> no, you you go first. You. I, I can't actually first. remember what I did here, but I did this other <laughs> preset today. Adrian just said that he needs to find some time to get that soldering iron out to fix his old Thomas Synthy analog synth. Is that a... When you say it's a Thomas Synthy, is that the same as the Synthy that I was showing before? Or the EMS Synthy? One more to go.
our chat room um, monitor. If there's anything in there okay. that can be sung out. Adrian said it was just before the moon satellite. Okay. Alright, we're done. Job done. Hey! So that didn't take long, really. Did it? There you go, guys. Bang. Job done. Cu couple a little bit wonky. Oh. Little tiny bit wonky there, but I'll fix them up later. They're all they're all soldered in properly. So um, let's have a quick overview. Doop. There it is there. All connected. So you can see there was a couple of wonky ones, but I mean I'm not, I'm not really you know doing this under a bit of pressure on the stream. So there you go. That's actually how easy it is. I've just made that whilst streaming YouTube. There you go. So all right, well done. Hey! Should we plug it in? I reckon we should yeah. plug it in. <laughs> What's the bet? I plug it in, we get the magic smoke. <laughs> <laughs> Do it. Do it. Alright, I'm gonna have to find a I'm gonna have to find a cable. Alright. Um Yep. Okay. What's that? Yeah. What I'll probably do just um for those playing along at home and thinking to themselves, oh gee, that was a bit wonky. Um I will go in and refix that so it's all nice and straight and everything. Um so yeah. But they're all they're all connected. So yeah. Okay. Now for those who don't know what I've been doing, it's this. The Mi Blip 35, it's a um, MIDI 3 kit. There you go. MiBlip.com forward slash pages forward slash support. Should we check that out and see if there's anything that we need to know? Probably should have checked that, shouldn't I? Whatever you do, don't solder before you <laughs> read this page. Uh, forward slash pages forward slash support. It said, didn't it? There we go. Okay, let's let's share it. Let's share the love. Here we go. Boom. All right. Which one do we have? Any of these? Um, 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 um. I don't think there's any of these here. Where's mine? Oh, I was hoping there'd be something. <laughs> I have to. I have to have a look for it. Um. Yeah, while, while we're talking, we'll definitely have a look for it. Triode, Anode, Mi Blip SE, but there's no 3.5 in here. Anyway, I can't find it. We'll, we'll worry about that later. Um, okay, plug so... It in, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. Just plug it in, you reckon? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, guys in chat, shall I just plug it in? Tell me. What do you guys think? Yeah, go for it. In You've Inky, got you've got that um, weird, weird crunchy sound again. You've yep. got your weird crunchy sound again happening. Have I? Yeah. Unplug it, plug it back in. That's your cable. It's the cable. I've just, I've just ordered another road mic. Your pop shield there reminds me of it. I've got one in the mail coming. But I need another mic cable for it. I need another long mic cable, I'm just thinking. I'll tell you another thing I've done this week. I got a... A foot controller for the RC505, um, so I can activate loops without having to use my hands. I can keep my hands playing guitar, particularly. It's really hard to go from strumming guitar to starting a loop. You always sort of miss the first bar. So that should be a handy little addition. Is that better? No, it's not better. On my back. It's not better, sorry. Um, I'm just going to disappear from the chair for a sec. But Dazza, you can keep talking. I'm just yeah. going to get a USB it cable. Yeah, that's all good. Um, yeah, what was I saying? Got a new foot pedal coming, new microphone. Um, been doing some live work. You can see the videos on my YouTube channel where I'm just fil filming myself playing in a restaurant. And the managers of the restaurant have just given me this opportunity to practice in front of an audience. So that's a really good way for me to develop my confidence with what I'm doing. And uh, I've been talking to a female singer this week, a girl with a really nice voice. 
I haven't... I haven't... <laughs> the gremlins are in the in the line there. Think he's still plugging stuff in, is she? I'll give you some time there with that. <laughs> How did the audio sound when I was playing before? Thank you for letting me do that. I really appreciate it. That, that I was, loved it. That was, that was a lot of fun. Guys I in the chat, show... guys are in the chat. Give us some feedback for um, Daz's yeah, little little shindig boost, that he did. Boost my confidence there. It, they're good it in the back. Awesome. Um, the thing about the thing about filming yourself when you're playing live is you get to see the good and the bad of it, like real from an objective outside point of view. When you're performing, there's so much going on, you really can't like make a fair assessment of what happened. Um, but to look back at it later, it's like, oh yeah, that's that's all right, or that's not that needs a bit more work. Inverted popes, you haven't missed much. We we've just been um, doing our normal crap <laughs> on the stream, but we love it. So you know. Some flux, flux test of soldering. Yeah, I'm probably going to have to. Oh, thank you, thank you, Adrian. Yep. So I, I recommend anyone who does soldering uh, just foot to controller. just um, just to grab a um, magnifying glass when you finish, and just go over your circuit board with your magnifying glass. Just double check to make sure your solder joints are nice, and then you're good to go. So. It was the F five six FS six was the foot controller. It's the one the one that's supposed to go with the five oh five. I'll put that in the yeah the FS six the foot controller. That sounds like something from um, Thomas the Tank Engine. The fat controller. <laughs> the foot the, the foot controller. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going to plug it in. Stuff it. If it blows up, it blows up. Do it, do it. It'll just make for more views. Okay, here we go. We'll make a meme out of the live stream when, when smoke starts coming up. What are you going to drive it with? What have you got the uh, MIDI coming from? What's, the, what's, what's going into it? Okay, I'm going to plug it into my PC that I'm streaming from right now. So if the stream goes offline, you'll know why. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that might not be the best idea. Yeah. Why not? Bye! <laughs> no, <exactly. laughs> Here we go. Ready, right. set. He's still go. there. Oh, he's got a light! He's got a light! You've got to send some signal through it. Look at that. Look at the light. Yeah. Hey, who doubted me? Come <laughs> on, you all doubted me. Everyone yeah, but that me. doesn't mean it. Hold on, it doesn't mean it actually works yet. It, uh, it, it hasn't done it anything yet. <laughs> yeah, it, it just means you've got to it. <laughs> I actually don't even know. I don't even know how to use it yet. So, <laughs> but that's a that is a good sign anyway. All right. Yeah, it's um, not smoking. It's, it's not sign. smoking. <laughs> and you know, don't forget, I did solder that. I did solder that in. So, there you go. Oh, okay, um, okay. It's not too bad. That's a good sign, um, but we'll, we don't need to go in and check out how this works anyway in the stream. It's it's you know it's going to get boring. No, 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 it's just a MIDI no, throughput. Yeah. All right, I'm going to turn the soldering iron off so I don't burn myself. Well yeah. done, well done. So there you go. You can do you can do stuff. And um, what I what I definitely suggest is um, everybody who wants to get into soldering, they need to get Dazza on the stream at the same time playing his music because it just works <laughs> yeah, exactly. beautifully. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it helps with concentration, sets the mood, the soldering Absolutely. mood. Absolutely, <laughs> that's why soldering jams. <laughs> yes, um, I think we should have. I, we should definitely have more like, playing music live and just just creating on the fly. I think it's yeah, a, absolutely. It just yeah. helps to, every time. Obviously, if you're into I, I, if you're into sort of retro computing, there's lots of channels that do this sort of stuff. You know, whilst they're talking, and I've there's a guy that lives in the UK, Andrew, somebody or other. He does all sorts of pro projects and kits and stuff. He's got the ability to solder and talk at the same time. I just find that phenomenally amazing. I love to be able to solder, but about the, all I can do at the same time while I'm doing it is listen to Dazza. <laughs> so there you go. Um, is that Darren, you've been... Takes you, every, every part, sorry. Inky, you're still it crunchy. Takes... Yeah, you're, you're distorting there, Inky. Yep. Stop being crunchy. Darren, how did we go? Did you enjoy that? Was that a bit too dry? For yeah, you? yeah, it was great. I've just, I've just been filling about whilst you've been uh, chatting and uh, stuff. Yeah, no, great. Is it? It's a mini free box, isn't it? You've just, you've yeah. just been soldering in. Yeah. Yeah. Let, let's put it down. Let's put it <laughs> over. 
Put it over yeah, here. There you go. Hey. Well, I say a box, you've not put a box on it yet. You can put these little stickers on the bottom. So it, it doesn't come with a box, you just put the stickers, these little things. No, feet. you need to make a box. You, you need to get a Perspex box or something. Yeah, yeah probably. Get, get, get a lunch box or something. Probably. Yes. Um, what are the guys in chat saying? Always good to get soldering magnifying glass on the stand with a few devices. Yeah, yeah. You know, those little alligator clips. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely need the magnifying glass to do the to beat snare and mod, mod, for sure. Normally, I don't I don't do soldering here, um, but I do it over there. I've got like a proper soldering mat and all all sorts of stuff. But you know, it, it's it was just a real basic kit, so I didn't think it's going to be too much of a drama. All right. So um, I was going to say, if you do get something and you think to yourself wow that like what were you talking about before inky the was it the erebus um what was it called again yeah the, it was as if it came out the erebus 3 was it darren uh there's no this uh, i can't remember what it's called there's the, the little erebus which um yeah. is for like putting in a modular and then you've also got the one with the um spring reverb but i can't remember what it's called Inverted Pope's Build Monster Kit Robot. Build Kit was the second one. It, it, the yeah, it's the second version in a kit form. Is that it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 two, and it's just it's exactly the same, but built for modern in a little kit. And then the other one was um one I can't remember what it, what it was. It had like loads of sliders on it. And it had um a spring reverb that you could put to it. Oh yeah, we showed that on the stream like, a few months ago, didn't we? Yeah, yeah, I can't remember what it's called. That yeah. that was the other kit. That I was a cheaper one, I think. I really, I really like want to that. get that. Yeah, yeah. I really, yeah. yeah, I want that. I might actually just just pull the plug on that and get that. Um, just to quickly, that's the solder that I use. It's um, it's the best quality solder. See, it even tells me, super <laughs> solder wire. No, just um, I was mentioning it before. 0.5 millimeters good. Okay, the reason for it is, um. It doesn't just like blur all over it when you're trying to solder. So you want it, you want it to be controlled, and yeah, it might mean that you might have to push it onto the tip a bit longer, but at least you've got the nice control. So, um, what's the next question? What sort of solder tip? That's the next question, isn't it? No, he hasn't asked yet. But that chisel tip is what I recommend. Um, always a chisel tip. Um, obviously, if you're doing uh, surface mount. You know, like really small, like that sort of type of electronics. It's really, really small stuff. There's going to be other soldering things that you're going to need, like point tips and things like that. But um, there's also methods to do that. It's different. But anyway, that, this is just for through hole that I'm talking about. Anyway, enough about that. Um, that um, Erebus thing. Let's get that up because um, I really want to get this. Not Erebus. Um, D -d 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 what are they called again? Dreadbox. 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 Dreadbox-fx.com, isn't it? If I remember rightly. Let's give them a plug. Yes, it is. Look at that. I remember their website. How long, how many websites do you actually remember other than like the main one, like Google and YouTube? How many websites do you remember the actual name of? Not many. <laughs> I usually just stuff them in my favourites, so I not don't. Don't really remember. You don't really type Get for music. In. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Here we go. It's called the Antiphon. The Antiphon. All right. Yeah. That's the, yeah. That's it. Let's get this up. The Antiphon. Now, while I've got my soldering on here, it keeps touching my Microsoft Surface. Which is not good. Oh, this is actually we talked about this before, Darren. This is really cool. This stuff. So these are the um, the chromatic modules you can buy. Yeah, I want every one of them. Yeah, but where we're into is into. And then um, you can give them to me because they look pretty. <laughs> yeah, they do look pretty. <laughs> anyway, this I is. I do. I really like them. This is the Andy font. Notice how it says difficult to build, forty percent. Even the even the little look the little uh, dread box uh, at the little Erebus, I want that. Yeah, that's what, yeah, that's what I want. So these are little Euro. I want to do the models. Hades. I don't want to show you this yeah, one anyway. I don't know. That's that's, the... that's cool. That I don't. So how much is it? 
it's not as I think that's one of the cheapest. 160, I think it was, wasn't it? 160 something. Something like that, yeah. There you go, 165 euros. Yeah. That's not that bad. I mean, yeah, I'm gonna have to sell something probably. <laughs> I'm, getting, I'm getting pretty bad now. Ah, uh, dear me. What was the other one? The Hades, yeah. That was you... pretty cool. Oh, How yeah. I didn't you... realize it was still as a. Sold out. Go on. Sold out. No, sold out. Sold out. Yeah. Come back. Oh, hang on. Why don't I? That's why I can't come back. There the we go. The little Arabis one. That's brilliant, but sold out. I can. I can. Email, I know the guy, so I might email him and ask him what's happening. Um. Yeah. He's cool. Actually, he's really cool. He's been talking to me about um, getting some more modules for mine. Um. I actually want. You remember that um case that I was telling you guys about a couple of weeks ago? Um. The create. Oh, yeah. Create audio one. Um. So I'm yeah. getting that. Because I actually thought that was a super deal for Eurorack. That was and, a brilliant case. Yeah. yeah. Super, yeah. super deal. So I've actually bought that. I'm just waiting for it to come in. It's one of those pre-order type jobs. So I'll show that on the stream when it comes. And um, I, I'm, I'm definitely going to get that Antiphon. Definitely. I think that's worth... Because that's not something that's that you, you know, you can't sort of go around and say, oh, that's in every synth or that's in, you know... If you had a, a bearing and neutron, you could do that with a bearing and it's not something that's normal. It's got um, it's kind of got form and filter sort of sections on it, and and that spring reverb. I mean, that's insane. That thing. So there you go. We'll we'll definitely check that out on the channel. I don't think I'll be soldering it. <laughs> oh, I'm doing a live stream though. I'll be taking my time with that one. <laughs> um, but just to give you an idea, like. Where are we? Um, I did. I, I never posted this video on my channel um, because it's pretty dry. But I did actually do. Where is it? This one. I did actually do a video of me. Do you remember how I was showing you that um, oscilloscope thing, Dazza? So this is it before yeah, yeah. I actually. This is it before I made it. Hi everyone, we're uh -huh. going to make a an oscilloscope, which is a little kit that I bought from eBay. And I've had this sitting in a drawer. For... I'm just going to turn myself off because yeah. I think it yeah, no, suck. So there you that's go. A that's a great it. idea. Yeah, yeah. There so you, you haven't, put, you haven't you put, just... put this up on, online yet? I've never put this online because I never finished the video. But okay. you can see when I built this thing, it was just so badly organized. I had to get a piece of paper and, figure and it out. I had to get all yeah. the resistors and all their values and all that sort of stuff and sit there with a multimeter and make sure that they were all correct. And I had to do that. And you can see... Here I had to group all the components together. Um, at this stage, I, you know, I'm doing all this sort of stuff, right? And I had to do all, it took ages. It looked about 45 minutes to an hour just doing that before I could even start soldering stuff. So here we go, here's me soldering uh -huh. through hole. And I was, I'm, I'm just kind of crapping on about how to do it. Yep. Blah, 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 blah. Can um, you make pretty pictures with it? I like when they do all the designs on the oscilloscope. You know, no, that's, sort of, that's they can draw of those. make yeah. words and things. No, it's not one of those. You've got to manipulate the XY axis. Yeah. Anyway, there's a bit of a bit of a look at me doing a video ages ago with um let's turn that off now. Cool. So that that was now, that. Are you, are you gonna hook it up for us and run show us something now? I'll do it on another stream, but that, that was that project there. Cool. That's got so, a nice case. Did you design that case yourself or did uh, that come the with case, it? The case was extra. And you yeah. just buy it with it. So you, oh, sorry, Mike. So you can see that's exactly the same thing that was being soldered. Um, yeah, you could a, obviously 3D 30, print a case, couldn't you? $30? 30, I think, like, if you're talking pounds, 15 pounds, guys, to, to get that from eBay. See, that's nothing, is it? It's nothing. Like, if you, even if you screw it up. I mean, mind you, that amount of crapping on that I had to do with getting all the resistor values and everything was a bit annoying. Um, so then I'm not going to get that hour back of my life. <laughs> I don't recommend that. I do not recommend that to anybody. That's, that was a shocker. Um, but yeah, the, um, the guy from audio thingies from France, France, France. Um, I always talk about this. He, he does good kits and he does really, really good, um, like instructions on how to put them together. So, um, yeah, I'm just kind of, I, I like this sort of stuff. I get, I get geeky, but you can tell. Um, Spark Punk from Spark Fun is a good kit, yeah, yeah. 
I haven't heard of that. Artemis Longfellow. I'm gonna I'm gonna add that to the queue because that's just a cool nick. What do you reckon, guys? Artemis Longfellow. There you go. <laughs> Let's put that on there. See down below me. I don't lie about these things. <laughs> I reckon that's a brilliant, brilliant suggestion. And also, um, I think there's a comment there from Adrian. I'll, it'll, yeah. So he was talking about the old Thomas Synthi analog synth. I'll just take that one out because we've already said that. Cool. I like this thing. This is kind of cool. I don't know if you guys can see, but I'll show you guys this. When you're streaming, I've got this thing called vMix Social, right? And I've got it running on my Microsoft Surface. Okay. It's just a little web page. And then what I can do is um, I can view all of your YouTube comments through here. See that? Hey. That's me at the top. Yeah. And then what I can do is um, I can, let me do the one that's you. It's F S six, that one there. I can highlight it and then add it to the queue, which I'll do All right. like that. And now look below me, give it a second. Bang, 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 come on. There you go. Isn't that magic? Uh -huh. That's really cool, isn't it? Cool little cool. feature. That's so I can okay. highlight, if you guys want to say, this is what I was saying to um, uh, Adrian before. If you want to ask a question about um, something specific, you know, just ask it in the in the chat and we'll highlight it and we'll chat about it. Now, um, I can't remember if he's actually asked it, if he's even still here. Is he still here or is he gone? I can't he's remember. Up. Where is he? Adrian Earnshaw, if you're still there, say hi, um, because you definitely had a question and I thought we'd chat about it before we finish the stream. I think it was a pretty good um, question to ask. Yeah, he hasn't asked it. Yeah, need to yeah. find the time to get the soldering iron out and fix his... He's gone off to do some soldering, I think. No, he's there. Here we go. He's no, asked okay. it. Beautiful. Good man. <laughs> Here we go. He's asked it. How do you grow your YouTube channel? Here we go. Uh -huh. Great question. Okay, so who wants to have a tackle at that? <laughs> Not me. <laughs> well, there's no part of me. <laughs> uh, there's one of us who's got a lot of subscribers. There it is down below, that question there. Okay, so how do you grow your YouTube channel? Okay, the first thing I would recommend is go check out a really crappy video that I did called um, promote, how to promote your, I don't know, I can't even remember what I, what I called it now. Um, promote your channel. How they promote your music or something like that? Uh, God, I don't even know if I'm going to be able to find it while I'm streaming. It's one of those shocking things. Um, okay. That I'll link it in the stream in a sec. Hang on. Um, okay, so but basically, what's the what's the essence of it? So basically, um, social media is your king. Is your king basically? You're going to have to, um, and everyone's talked about this before. So you're going to have to use all of the social media um, networks that you've got. So if it's Facebook, it's Twitter, even Instagram, um, and any of the others, um, you know, think, even things like Reddit and um, posting on forums. Uh, like for example, I post on a couple of forums. I post on one called Gear Sluts, um, and you know, there's- Discord. Certain, yeah, there's Discord as well, but so but yeah so discord seems to be more refined you've got a very refined audience and then you've got things like forums are sort of less refined but it's more people then you've got things like reddit where there's more people and you've got things like facebook and youtube where you've got massive amounts of people so basically what you've got to do is you've got to get yourself into those um you know those sort of social media things and learning how to do that um Okay, my video is called Music Promotion and Introduction. Okay, it's on my channel. Just go to my channel later and check it out. And what I do is I take a bit of a brief look at what's required to begin your music promotion journey. And I cover the use of social media. And I cover things like, um, you know, how to use SoundCloud, how to use things like, you know, those sort of stuff. Um, so basically, um, the reason why you use social media is because that's where people are. 
But once you actually start using social media, you're going to have to learn how to do it well and not get people thinking that you're just spamming their group or their channel or whatever it is that you're using. You've got to kind of do it in a tasteful way, um, sort of in a way where um, find groups which invite you to share music. Like, for example, I run a Facebook group called the Australian um, Electronic Musician, and um, I do the opposite to what a lot of Facebook groups do, and I actually encourage people to promote their own music. Um, and it's a, quite a good group because of that. We don't have people getting disgruntled in that group. Um, so, you know, find groups that are encouraging, you know, that sort of stuff. But once you've got sort of, you know, your, your music out there, um, I always find there's different ways to sort of promote yourself. Like you can promote yourself directly and say, hi, I'm a musician, this is my music, have a listen, you know, can do that the direct sort of way. You can also do it indirectly. Like, um, you know, for example, with me, I'm running a YouTube channel. My YouTube channel is really not a lot about my music, is it, guys? So, um, although I do slip it in every now and then, you know, I sort of, I don't do it like in your face. I just kind of, I might put music on at the start that's mine. And you generally I do that because I don't want to be copyright stung. But, um, you know, and also, you know, sometimes I might do a review of something, a song I've made, or I might show a live performance, or I might show a jam. So there's all sorts of different ways you can sort of indirectly but directly, you know, promote your music. Now, specific to YouTube, which I guess is probably where I come from, which is my sort of domain, um, I, I just find that when you're creating content, there's kind of, there's so many videos out there on, that even just YouTube themselves have, have um, published. So you don't even have to go and find someone's channel. You just go into the actual YouTube um, learning side and they'll tell you how to create content in a way that engages. They'll tell you, you know, how to make sure that you've got, you know, a certain way that you, you talk, a certain way that you present lights, you know, cameras, things like that. Get all that sort of basic stuff sorted and then you're not going to get people thumbs downing you and laughing at you. I mean, I get that all the time because <laughs> I still haven't got it perfected, but you guys, you know what I'm saying, just try and get the sort of basics right. And it's not that hard. You can get most of it right pretty easily. And then you'll start to sort of get better at it and better at it as you try. And like these guys, all of these guys that you see on the screen here, they've all got YouTube channels, right? And they all release videos. And all I'm telling you right now, all of the videos that they release are really good. So the reason why they don't have 100,000 subscribers is you know, a scratch your head scenario, who knows? Um, <laughs> I, I think yeah, I think you've got to look at what what is the goal that you're trying to achieve and why. Um, for for me, I have no plan to monetize my channel. The reason I'm using YouTube is it just helps me make connections with people. Uh, I'm very much about having just individual clients, so that's kind of the direction I'm going in. It's not about having a massive YouTube channel. It's more about having personal connections with people who get to know me and then get to trust me and then I can live stream audio straight to them. Yeah. Um, so I've got a I've got a, like a business plan around that. Yep. So it's yeah. So everyone's for me to have got got different, you know, everyone like you're saying, everyone's probably got different um, goals, you know. So it'll I differ. Think it starts it, it starts getting hard when you don't think about it. Mine started by accident. Um, and then you start meeting people and following them. So uh, uh, what, you've only got so much time in the day. So you get to a point where you think, well, more subscribers means I'm going to have to follow them as well if they're good, you know. And so I'm quite happy at a low subscriber point because I know them. But, that, you know, any more, I can't follow them. So yeah. who do I cut out? Yeah. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. But yeah. the big, U the big so YouTube teeth. channels are not are not following back. They're just plowing ahead with their own content creation. There's no, they don't get well, time to read the comments. I have to say, Sound and Gear, he he did follow me back, so he was pretty cool. But yeah, it's impossible. Who would you pick out of twenty thousand people? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So I'm yeah. quite happy. I, I I have to understand that if I do promote myself now. That I have to stop that. There, there needs to be a line in the sand that I know who I know now, and I can't know anyone else because there's not enough time, is there? 
Yeah, I enjoy uh, what Darren does is saying, the one-on-one yeah. one and getting to yeah. meet people. And that's how I know a, a big, Darren and all of you. A big, a big part of where I'm coming from is that I'm just a creative person and I need, I just want to have the outlet. Before there was the internet, I was making hundreds of recordings on cassette tape just for myself. And it, and it really doesn't matter to me that much whether like a, a heap of people are listening. In fact, that, that would probably just cause me stress and having to think about what they think about, about me or whatever. And where I'm at at the moment, I can just create whatever I want and put it up and like it's been really nice just having the friendship with you guys and getting direct sort of comments on things hey thanks like i know who you are and i know where you're coming from and i'm really comfortable with that i don't really have a goal to to get up to where, where you're at rands with like five thousand subscribers and i don't know who's watching and or or, or whatever you know it just know, just seems too big a hill to climb and and i don't know what the motivation for me to do that is especially when i really don't want to have advertising in my videos that's mm. that's just a mor moral thing for me mm. I, I mean, I'll, I'll tell you why I put advertising in my videos, and and that is because I've got expenses. I mean, this yeah. thing this thing doesn't come for free. Um, I mean, as it is, that technically I'm not even getting paid to to do this, you know, and um, it's just I'm just doing it because I love doing it, and it's. Just, how, you know, it's how do you find the How do you find the revenue from from it's, YouTube? It's nothing. It's, I, it's a few dollars. Yeah. It's really yeah. not a lot. So what, have when to you guys to... when you guys watch my videos and you see ads, you think, ah, oh, bloody hell, he's got an ad, you know. Um, just just I, I remember, run an ad block. I run an ad blocker, so I don't see any yeah. ads. <laughs> but just just remember that the, even the few dollars that I do earn from it, even it's not, not a lot. It's but it actually does go into my bank account. Um, so the other day I, I got a payment from YouTube. It was about seventy bucks, and I don't remember the last time. It was a few months ago. So it's not a lot of money. It's really not. Um, is it worth it? Probably not, um, but that's the only, technically it's the only income that I get from it. Now, can I just quickly just go off on a little slight tangent, because we're talking to Adrian about this. Um, I also recommend that you have your own website. I, I th um, strongly recommend it. So here's my website, I'm, and I'm just using, this is just a standard WordPress website. There's nothing fancy about it. I just find them easy to use, um, and I mean, I, I publish a lot of videos and content on here so you know you'll see me on here quite a bit now this I'm actually a bit behind on here I haven't posted for a couple of weeks so I've released a track that hasn't been put on here yet and there's a few videos that I've done recently on here as well but um, if you do post on a website this helps Google sort of find you and you've got you might have your youtube channel you're posting on that you can always link back to your website from your youtube channel and you're obviously doing the opposite on your website so definitely have a website even even those um free ones that you can get the ones that offer some sort of content creation thing that's easy some sort of blogging thing even something like that at, at a basic level i mean in my case i've registered a domain um i come from an it background so it's easy for me to do this sort of stuff but um, for you guys who don't, um, there's a lot of easy sort of self-creation stuff out there. So definitely website is another one. Um, and yeah, so where do you publish your music? Well, um, I, I would say as, as many places as you can is the answer to that, because that's another way of promoting yourself. Um, so this, upload this your music to SoundCloud, up, upload it to um, Bandcamp and... This what did you say? Um, yeah, just when you start, that's a commercial release though. So yeah, basically, you can, you can pay. You no, know, you can release it to, like, it just releases it everywhere. It doesn't have to be commercial, really. You pay eighteen pounds to upload as much as you want for a year. Yeah, so it's it's like what I'm not saying. It's a commercial distribution thing. Um, so I'm talking at the, at the very basic level, you can start with the free one. So you're looking at like um, uh, Bandcamp and SoundCloud and there's a few others and I've actually put them in that video. And then Inky, yours is the next stage where you wanna actually distribute. And I, I definitely recommend using DistroKid as well. It's really good. Um, I actually used to use um, someone else before that and actually more expensive. So, you know, do, do your shopping around, but at the moment I think DistroKid's pretty good. Um, so that will get your music up in Spotify, into Amazon, uh, Google Play, um, what was iTunes but now is Apple Music and a whole bunch of other places as well, Yeezer and all sorts of weird ones that I've never heard of. 
Um, and depending on what country you come from, you've probably heard of them more. So, um, so Adrian's saying he gets free commercial distro with the library that he's signed to. That's really good. That's awesome. Um, gave up on SoundCloud. Okay, I mean, yeah. Um, just remember though that there's people in in things like SoundCloud and that. So um, it might be a way that they connect with you. So um, I, I, um, I, I'm not a f massive fan of SoundCloud, to be honest. I, I actually, yeah, I kind of, it, it's one of those love-hate relationships. Um, but if people find you in that platform, then they found you, you know, so it's done its job. And I've got people that say to me, oh, wow, I didn't know you had a YouTube channel. I actually used to listen to your music on SoundCloud. And you think, what? <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> you listen to my crap? <laughs> But you know, it happens. And when it when it happens, you think to yourself, okay, this does work. This stuff actually does work. You know, there's people that are finding you. And there's an old saying in in the advertising and marketing industry: if they can, if they hear of you at least three times in three different, you know, whether it's by word of mouth, if they see you on, you know, on a, synth a, memes. a flyer, if they see you on synth memes, yeah, whatever. If, if there's the three, <laughs> there's the three times phenomenon. Once they've once they've seen you three times. They're not, then they, there's the believability factor. Oh, this guy's okay. kind of around. Yeah, he's kind of getting out mm -hmm. there. So, mm -hmm. so that's kind of what I'm saying with that. That's a good point. Yeah. So you know, it, even if you hate something, like I, I'm, I don't hate SoundCloud, but I don't, I don't love it. So you know, just persevere with it. Um, there's others that I like SoundCloud that are out there too. So um, the other thing too is you can find. Um, like what I'm trying to do on my YouTube channel now is this live streams every Saturday and we've just introduced a new segment called Jam of the Week and um, I really want to push this because I, I actually firmly believe that um, where we're at now as an artist it's you know it's harder to get out there there's so many people making music now and you know you've, you've just got to give people a chance so yeah, there's no money to be made really either. So, you know, you've got to give people a chance. And I think, you know, whatever I can do, the little tiny bit that I can do to the world, it's, it makes me feel good and makes all, all the other people here feel good as well. So we all like it, don't we, guys? So, yeah. Um, and, yeah, you know, if if that's okay, Adrian, you're welcome to come on um, onto the stream and showcase some of your music. We'd love to hear it. So there's, there's an invite for you. Um, and same with everyone else who's in chat. I've, I've said this before, anyone who wants to come onto the stream, you're more than welcome to jump on. All you gotta do is just um, send me a message and we can, we can sort it out. Um, these guys that you see here in these four squares, um, all do it for free. They, they, they have the same love as me and they believe in whatever it is that we're doing. And that's why you see them all the time because you know they're sitting here and they enjoy this. Um, you know, you can ask them separately. Sometimes we get frustrated with each other, but <laughs> well, most of them don't know. No, I'm just joking. But you know, I can't stand you guys. <laughs> get off! You say that. You say that over there. Come over here and say that, <laughs> Dada. Come on. Oh, I wish. Yeah, I'd love yeah. to come and visit. I've, I've been to England once. But believe it or not. Um, the way if you, if you're talking about making money from music, um, I believe at the moment the biggest way you're going to do it is to perform live. So I really think the, I agree. that's that's the only place you're going to make money from music now. Um, if you can do gigs, if you can perform live, if you can tour, even if you're lucky enough to get signed by a label, that's really going to be the way that you're going to do it. So making money off Spotify non-existent. I mean, how many plays do you need to get before you earn a dollar? I think it's over a thousand or something. That's a lot of people to listen to your track before you only own a dollar. Think about the old days when you sold CDs. You'd, you'd make it so much quicker. Um, so, you know, just think about that sort of logic and then, you know, get yourself out there. The people that live around you will be behind you because you're local. And then when you start sort of spreading yourself out to different, car, different cities, different countries, you know, those people that live around you will still support you because, you know, you're from there and they'll follow you. And then that becomes, you then start having a fan base. And they talk about fan bases a lot. It's true, you do, you have a fan base. And you gotta look after your fans like family. You gotta, you gotta reward them. You've gotta tell them that you appreciate them. You've gotta communicate with them. Then, and there's a whole sort of 
another you know conversation about what to do with fans and fan management so and i'm and i'm trying to sort of say it from a very beginner sort of level because i i don't even have that phenomenon happening with me so i just know about it because i've got people that i talk to regularly so michael's in the in the chat as well he's someone that plays live um and if you go check out his channel he, he he's just recently popped a couple of videos up just recently they're awesome those tracks he's done so um you know that's what i recommend just do all the social media stuff play live um and just keep you know keep your fingers typing basically so yeah um i don't know if that's helped adrian I'm, it's, you know there's more to talk about it's very kind of very brief but um there's definitely more to talk about i think what you'd need to do in this particular example is go you'd pull apart that whole topic about how do you promote yourself and find a subtopic and then expand on that because that way you're kind of then getting a bit deeper into drilling down and um that video that i did kind of introduces each one of those sort of main topics in a very basic introduction sort of thing so that would give you an option to go and you know expand on them and check them out um there was something else i was, I was going to mention too have you guys heard of um uh, okay, so when you're making a track, right, and you've put it up places like SoundCloud or Spotify or whatever like that, there's there's this thing where people would love to be able to download your track. Do you remember we were talking about that recently where it's becoming a streaming world and then like fans will never own your music physically where, you know. So now there's this phenomenon where we're finding that fans want to download your music and you can do that by rewarding them. And then we we're talking before about fans will follow you. This is one way to reward them, be given the opportunity to download. Um, now I used a thing, I'm trying to remember what it's called now. Um, hyped it, hyped, hyped edit, hyped it, H -I -H -Y -P -E -D -D -I -T dot com. hyped it. Um, and there's a few that do this, so this is not the only one. Um, now what they do is they offer, there's ways that you can promote your music through here. And basically the reward is, um, it's like a single point where they can go to, um, and they can see, say, say there's an album you've done or even just a track and you can find it on all the different mediums. So there's a link that shows that track on Amazon, on Apple music, blah, 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 blah. And they're all there on one page. That's what they do. It's kind of like a portal for that music. And then there's um, rewards for sharing. So if they share that link, then they get to download your music as a WAV file or something like that, or a high quality MP3. It's up to, depending on how you've done it. So that's actually another cool way of promoting your music. And you can join them with Facebook or SoundCloud or something like that too. So um, hypeddit.com if you, yeah. I think I mentioned that in the video too. So. There's, there's some weird things out there that people don't don't know about. So these, you know, a way to do it. Um, I will admit too, so I've had a couple of tracks go crazy on SoundCloud. Um, just talk about SoundCloud, but just because it's an easy one to talk about. Um, they went crazy on Spotify as well. Um, I didn't make any money out of it. It went crazy on SoundCloud. It does nothing for you, uh, apart from gives you a bit of a, a warm, fuzzy feeling that you've had 30,000 people listen to your track. And you think, well, what the hell? <laughs> How did that happen? Um, and the reason for that is, is because I put it so many different places, eventually it kind of, it just started to work for me. Does that make sense? So, mm -hmm. you know, that's what you got to do. It takes, it takes time. And these things, you might f even forget that you've done it. <laughs> Look, I did. <laughs> a few months went by and I, oh, that's right. I did that, didn't I? <laughs> and then all of a sudden there's all these people playing your track and you think, shit, that was months ago when I did that. <laughs> So yeah, there's all that crazy stuff going on. Um, yeah, anyway, um, there you go, Adrian. We'll leave it at, at that for you, mate. <laughs> He's got to cut and run. So we're, we're going to cut and run too. We've been going for an hour and 50. So um, yeah, thanks a lot. What do you think, guys? What should we? Did we forget anything? I think we've got it covered at all, didn't we? It's an interesting stream. It was a bit of everything today, wasn't it? Yeah, like bit music, bit soul win. Yeah. It's like a workshop, wasn't like, it? Like, like a, a little workshop. workshop. Bit of geekiness. Yeah. Um, what did you say, Darren? I didn't quite catch you. You kind of... 
I'm I'm go- I'm going darker and darker. I was just saying who's going to be the darkest before we finish. Me or Dazza? <laughs> or Inky even? You can always can always get your brightness from me. <laughs> I've got five lights on in here at the moment, and I'm sweating. Notice how the keyboard's so lit though. It's, it's like have you just got a light on the keyboard? <laughs> it's a showroom. <laughs> He's got the showroom yeah. lights. Yeah, it's a... So yeah, yeah. God of keyboards behind him. <laughs> do, we, do, do, we, do we get to see what's behind the future sound of London there? He doesn't want to show us. No. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> okay. That's it? part Is of it? the build. Do you reckon it's his hidden DVD collection? <laughs> <laughs> Is it part That'll of the definitely be in the dark. <laughs> <laughs> or is it part of the so, build that's wired? Just wires. It, um, it's See, not Michael. wired yet. Okay. Yeah, that's cool. Um, the, the, the build will be coming across here. Yeah, okay. Jazz is showing off his lights now, which is... It, it's annoying me because my light broke this week. My my, my very expensive light broke this week. Mine are mine are all they do the opposite of what they're supposed to do. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. <laughs> uh. Inky, the thing that broke is your mic cable. I think you're slapping that mic cable. Is it? Is it? I'm yeah, there's definitely a problem with that cable. I'd be getting I'd be going and getting myself a new mic cable. That's a shocker. So, um, she doesn't want to look, she's reluctant. Oh, I'm going to make this, get the soldering iron out then if you, <laughs> yeah, chop the end off. I used to do that. I used to do that for a living. I soldered hundreds of snow. There's a spare one in the box, I think. Go like this to it. I'm going to attack you with my soldering iron. Before you fix it up, make sure you sample that and make some loops out of it. Yeah, it's very 8 bitty, isn't it? Good little, it's a yeah. bit crusher. Do Listen to the stream back, you'll know exactly what we're talking about. She probably can't hear it. Oh. No, I can't. So you're not... I can only hear you. Yeah. Ah, oh, right. Yeah. I could feed it back to her, but it should, she'd be a bit peed at that, because she'd hear herself at a delay. Yeah, I just mute it. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. Um, I was going to say something. The So, um, I did a stream uh, yesterday, and it was kind of like just out of the blue. Um, and it was, There was a few of us kind of watched it too, so... I think Inky popped in for a bit. It was good. Um, so if you haven't checked that out, it's um, not the normal stuff I do, but I did get a little um, a video sort of thing in there. So if you guys are interested in YouTube and streaming and stuff like that, watch that video because um, we do talk a little bit. We geek out a little bit about cameras and HDMI and connectors and switches and things like that. So it was a little um, little Black Magic Design box I got called A10 Mini. So yeah, go check that one out. Um, and I do apologize for not streaming last week. Um, I was camping with my children. I think I mentioned it. So for those who, who missed it, um, you'll know why. Um, but like I said, there's definitely, um, if you ever want to know if I'm streaming or not, just check out my, my website, ramsey.com forward slash live. And it will definitely have the current stream that's up, when it's up, and the link to it as well. Because I've noticed YouTube can be a bit weird about giving you the link to the stream. And I think, Dazza, you, you found that out today where you were linking to it on your Facebook page and it gave the, the link to my previous stream, but it didn't give the latest link, which was right. kind of weird. So um, yeah, yeah, yeah. so normally, if you guys stream on your website, on, on YouTube, sorry, um, you, it would be your channel forward slash live. And that should be, you know, whatever stream that you guys have set up. But it doesn't always work like that because they're mucking around with the studio at the moment and it's just doing my head in. So... I thought the easiest solution is to do it on my website, ramsey.com forward slash live, and then everyone knows that that's going to be correct. So if you ever want to know. Alrighty, oh, so it was good to see everyone. Um, definitely all the regulars are here. So yeah, what do you think, guys? That was cool. I was much Great happier one. with my yeah. music performance. I want to listen back to that and see how it sounded. So thanks, really for letting, thanks for letting me do that. Well, even considering it was Skype audio, I thought it sounded really good. Okay. Every time I practice, it just helps me lift lift my game and try to keep it simple and not get overcomplicated with what I'm adding in. And hmm. yeah. Oh, that's awesome. So th- thanks, thanks for the opportunity. I really appreciate it. And I'm just looking at. Let's just have a look at 
Dazza. There's there's the clock on the bottom right hand corner underneath Dazza there. That's how yeah, late. That's it's going about on to, to hit three, three a.m. Almost three a.m. <laughs> for him. Yeah, yeah. Tell, <laughs> tell me about it. And now I've got to shut down and go to sleep. Yeah. The dogs. The dogs over there snoozing. He's on the bed just. Do you guys after the stream? Do you guys find that it takes a little while for the brain to quieten down? Oh yeah, yeah. Who said my brain's got going? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Darren, Darren, we 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 would love. It. Hurry up and fix your studio so you can get that Akai out, so we can check that out. We're we're dying it, well, to see that. Yeah. The um, I'll I'll see what I can do, but the the studio's not going to be this section's not going to be visible till after christmas okay so it's going to be a little while before you see it um well well, no that's that's the best thing because when next time the lights come on it'll be empty there's nothing there (laughs) i think Um, inky Inky and i will definitely probably be talking about akai next week that's the theory that that i've heard i've heard that there's something coming ah. out this week so inky that that's just come in through another um, message from me from somewhere else. So the theory is that there's, an, uh, there's going to be some sort of release during the week. So we'll see. It's great when they update stuff. It's uh, like Christmas free. Yeah. I, I don't know why people are moaning. People moan, oh, it's not what I wanted. No, but it's awesome and it's free. You know? And it gets so, me to do yeah. another firmware video. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. just, right. just on a note, um, yeah. my my video tomorrow that usually goes up yeah. uh, every Sunday, four o'clock, is a, um, is a very different one tomorrow from usual, and it'll also have a um, a release date on there, so you'll have to watch it to see the release date of what it is. Oh, okay. I think I know what it is, but I won't say. Yep. Cool, cool. Yeah, definitely uh, do that. Um, now, down, uh, Darren, Darren, down Darren, below is the sorry, description. Darren. It'll have the links to all your channels, too. Darren did one of the best uh, videos ever, where he throws his MC three hundred three. Yeah, we showed it on the stream. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's absolutely. I think that's how we met because I mentioned I'd got, I could see one in his studio and, and that. Yeah. I think that was, Darren. I was that the first time you came on the stream. I showed that. I think it was, wasn't it? Uh, no, I think I come on before that. Before the the MC three hundred three three was a was a few in. Yeah. Yeah, so if you guys, um, you should go check out his channel and have a look at that. That's actually a pretty cool video. Um, there was a, quite a few jokes going around on that stream, I remember about it. <laughs> After, you know, <laughs> yeah, what else was in the freezer? <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to freeze something else. We won't go there. Yeah, you could freeze your MX1. Yeah. <laughs> Finn's saying he's got... Two new guitars to abuse. A Harley Benson and a Behringer. Oh, are the Behringer of Guitar World, if anyone knows them. Uh, I don't think I do. Um, I'm not a big guitar person, but I do own guitars. Um, so, that's yeah. That's interesting to know, though. Yeah. I've, I've got a bass guitar that's just been refurbished, and it really needed the work. It's like a 1975 model Yamaha. And I'm just really I'm waiting to get that back. Should be back here soon. But then I'll be able to li- live loop that live with everything else. Uh, I got a question for you guys while I'm talking. Um, is anyone familiar with the? This is an Impact Twin from TC Electronic. I was given this during the week uh, from my sister who got it for free off Facebook. Just hang, and just it, hang on one sec, Dazza. I'm gonna I'm gonna bring you I, up. I just wanted oh, yeah. to show that. I just wanted to show that comment from um, Finn below that we we're talking about the Harley Benson. That, are the bearinger of guitar so there you go now i'm going to go to you do you want to just bring that up again I, no I, I might be changing the subject a little bit um it, it, tc electronic this is an audio interface anyone familiar with that the impact twin not personally no no, no. yeah just a, an interface but the point is it came with a copy of because you guys are so into ableton live and i've never used it there's a copy of ableton live light 8 would that uh, would that be would that be oh, any no. good no it's gone skis holy uh, cow i told one. you Really? Eight. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, they're on ten now. Long time. Ten ago. point somewhat. But eight eight would have been like two thousand and ten. Two thousand and twelve or something. Would I be able to run it? Like it I could yeah, run that. Still yeah. Anyway. Yeah. yeah. But you can't right, the problem with light 
Normally, when you have things that are light, they just take instruments away. But with yeah. Ableton Light, you can't bounce things out. You right. Can't, if you make a track, you can't get it out. Yeah. That's uh, the light okay. version. Right. Now, anything you make, you're stuck with it being in that you, format. You, you can't, can't bounce it out. You can't re rewire it to another program like Cubase and, and record it into Cubase, maybe. No. Yeah, you could, but you could, you could do all yeah. sorts of things. I think things. Rewire's right. disabled. Really? Rewire's uh, disabled in Ableton. Yeah. Right, in the yeah, light. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. But there is, there is, ways, like there is ways around you can't, you can do things, but it's it's convoluted. Mm -hmm. um, you're, better, you're better off sticking with Cubase anyway, because you've got all the Yamaha yep. gear there and everything, so, you know. Yeah. Yamaha own Cubase now, so. Yeah, 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 I know. It just goes with hand in glove with the montage. That, um, John's saying that yeah. uh, that interface looks like a Motu Audio Express. It could it could just be a rebadge jobber. Um, oh yeah, that's actually quite an old one that you're showing us though. So it's probably what? Uh, oh, it's a it's a big boy. Nine or, I tell you. nine or ten years old. Yeah, yeah. I wonder if it's US. If it's, it's built, um, built, built like a tank. It's got like rubber casing. Finn is actually saying that we're wrong about Cubase, about uh, Ableton Light, actually. Sorry. He's done it, has he? Is that in 8, though? Yep. Because I thought it no, no, was. You... But the light, doesn't it automatically... Yeah, but the latest version might. Oh, but I, I think in 8 it didn't. Well, I, I got the latest version... Uh... Through a circuit, and it's, it's very dark, but we, we can see it. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oops, give it a run, see what I can do. Yeah, um, I've, I've always wanted to run multiple I, interfaces. I rem I, I had it eight years ago, obviously, and I remember trying rewire in it, and it was pretty sure it was disabled in eight. And then I, I don't think I've tried it ever since. So there you go. Um, that might be why I've always thought it just doesn't work. So, so, so well, do you run Ableton Live just independently? You run it just on its own? You don't link it up to another program? Me? Uh, I run it independently, yeah. Um, yeah. Sometimes I'll I'll do stuff in Ableton and I'll stem out and then I'll go into um, Studio One, which is the Presonus DAW, because right. Presonus have got things like um, Melodyne and that core. I, th I think I showed you that before, Dazza, with the chord stuff that's in it, sure. which yeah. is really, really cool. Um, yep. But yeah, the Darren remember that too. I showed him that as well. Um, you, I, yeah. I'd, I'd want to have it slave to Cubase. That'd be the the, well, the dream. I, I I tried that, but my computer couldn't hack it. I tried having yeah. live open just just for a yeah. clock, and yeah. Serato DJ to play records, yeah. and then Logic to feed it all back in, and it, the whole thing just crashed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah Ableton, to... even on its own. Even though there's nothing running in it, it's a big program. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's so, pretty hungry. Ableton's pretty hungry. So, and and, yeah. and I believe it processes audio in a very different way to all the other programs too. It's always yeah. sitting at the now moment. It uses it, the um, AIF format and um, it it has its own propriety. So so they've gone off and licensed it off Sony because Sony owned the AIF format. And right. they've actually made their own proprietary format. So if you actually go in, you can't like... Some of their, um, you know, their, Run web, their web packs, files and things. You know, their sample packs and stuff that you get. You can't actually just go and copy the AIF files out. Um, right. You'd have to hack into them. It's, it's people know how to do it, but it's it's the, not not well known. Sure. I st I still have I still have a fully boxed Ableton Live um, standard, fully boxed, which I never actually opened um, because I was waiting to get. God, you can't see me. I was waiting to get um, the computer to fit it on, and by that time. I think um, Ableton 9 was out, I think. I can't remember anyway. Um, I was on a different computer. But the last track that was up um, on my channel was originally made in Ableton 8. I mean, I've had to tweak it since for it to go out, but it was originally made in Ableton 8. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, yeah I, I'm pretty sure massive, I gave that a listen. But there's a massive difference between Ableton 8 and Ableton 10. Um Maybe, oh, yeah. um, you know, just in terms of all the certain ways that they, it, it's programming and stuff like that, you probably... Mm. Um, well, you're Ableton probably, 10 you're light, light would be better. Fine. Which one? Right. 
Uh, just the basic Ableton 10 lights would be better than Ableton 8 now yeah, anyway. Right. Yeah. But you can yeah. get yeah, right. you can right. get um you can't get light just by downloading it though. You have to have something that gives it to you, don't you? Like an Arturia yeah, thing but you or can buy anything. Yeah, you like mm. Yeah. Mm. Uh, Excel or Novation Circuit or I think yeah. In fact, I think I've still got a license if you want to borrow it, if you want it. I think I've probably got I've probably got a hundred here. Yeah. We, we <laughs> yeah, I think yeah. I might have. I, I think it here. gives you it gives you the auto, the next level anyway, doesn't it? Because it's a download. Yep. Mm. It will. Yeah, it should do. Yeah, that's a, that's the point. You should be able to install it, and then it should let you upgrade it. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, if you go. Yeah. We'll see how you go anyway. Okay. Uh, so it's still supported. I really haven't spent a lot of time with software lately. It's been good. I'm I'm really keen to try this new MPC stuff out, just because I can. I think that'd be good. Like Inky, the other day I was actually when you showed me that link. You, I mean, I forgot to tell you this because I was sort of busy with work and stuff. But I, I literally just about fell off my chair because um, you sent me this link. You said, "Oh, there's a new firmware upgrade for the MPC," and I'm like, "No, oh, no, I said, I said, no, I actually said you're gonna like this." And oh, that's, that's right. all I said. Yeah, yeah. yeah so anyway, right. I, I went off and watched the video, and then I. Then I was like watching this video. I'm like, you know how you have one of those deja vu moments where you're just thinking to yourself, "What the hell am I just watching?" Because literally, like the that same day earlier, I was mucking around and I was thinking to myself, "How do I get, like, how do I get Ableton to launch my MPC and it all be in sync?" And I know I've got the Ableton link and I've got all that stuff and it works, blah blah blah. But how do I get it to? If I press play on the transport and ableton to press to start the transport on the npc and you know and all these sort of little you know technical questions were going through in my head and wouldn't it be nice if you could launch clips from the pad from your ableton live without going into control and you know it was all these sort of kind of just weird things that were going through my head and then like a few hours later here i am watching a video of them doing all that stuff that was literally just going through my head it was bizarre it was just one of those weird moments and then, mm. then they pull it from us. It's like, what? It was almost like, was that a dream that whole day? <laughs> it's one of those crazy musician type dreams, isn't it? That you, that you would have. I, I think the AI is picking up on your on your thoughts. <laughs> yeah, it's it's reading your mind. I've just received a notification here. How to improve your? How to get your first thousand streams? Spotify promotion. Like I'm not it's even subscribed to, to this guy, and it's, it's just sending me this stuff. Mate. That's it. It's listening to you. Yeah. Next, next thing I'll see, I'll see, I'll see eBay ads for MPC Live. That's the next thing that will happen, and then will be, and they'll end up on scam next week. <laughs> yeah. Uh, beautiful. All right, guys. Well, I think we're probably done. We just, um, we're just shooting the breeze now. Um, yeah. Two hours and ten minutes. Thanks everyone for joining us. Um, thanks Darren. Thanks Inky. Thanks Dazza. And also thanks to all you guys in chat. Absolutely. More than welcome to come back next week. I don't even have a topic for next week. Um, I was hoping that Darren might bring his Akai out. But <laughs> I don't know how much more we can egg him on. Guys, put pressure on Darren to bring his Akai out, okay? We want to see that... that um, is it 16-bit? 16-bit of the 3000, isn't it? Yeah. 16-bit one. The 3000. Uh, the, uh, the S01. I'm not sure. Yeah. Have you... Yeah, I want to see the... I also want to check out a nine, a nine hundred or a nine fifty. That'd be cool. I've got a nine fifty as well. Oh, you're a nine fifty. Okay, because they're um yeah they're only eight bit, aren't they? The nine fifties. The 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 bloody big. I'll tell you that. They're massive. Yeah, they're like yeah. They're like well, five when you think about it, the uh, let's have a look. I can't get the camera down there, but yeah, it would be in the nineteen inch rack here. Yeah, but they're bit. like they're like you know that long, weigh a ton. Can you see that? I need to put the light on here, don't I? You do. Yeah. Can't see anything. Yeah, yeah, you do. We we like your overhead light. That's oh, better. much better. Oh, he, he's so cute when the light's on. <laughs> Guys, look at his face. <laughs> he's, 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 he's a, a good-looking awesome. boy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I'd like to hear more um, modular from you, Darren. More modular. Yeah, I've got I've, I've got to get back to that, haven't I, really? Yes, yes, uh, yes, yes I, you like do. Say, and I set your challenge during the week. I, I want a key change in the middle of one of your songs. I want it to go up a time. Oh, 
Yeah, so it's, just, it's that one. It, it's just going to lift everything to another level. So. It, it was the last track. It was the last track. Ended, and it, whatever it takes, you know, it's not tricky. Yeah. It, well, it is because it's all down in audio. I only had one audio stem of that track. Yeah, yeah, obviously so, you can't do it with an old piece, but for something new, it's a, yeah. You can warp it's a, it? Well, something new, yeah. Come on, mate. It's warp what? it. Warp that track. <laughs> warp the pitch. Yeah. And I'll try I and do the same sort of stuff. And I'll, I'll the, try and come up with something myself. Warp it and use Complex Pro. There you go. There's a tip I'm, for I'm you. I, feel complex. Like, I feel like we've started interrogating Darren. We've made yeah, him turn a bright light on us. And now we're throwing <laughs> questions of what he Just will be doing. Just answer the question. Just answer the question. What? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm sat down here working around. I mean, you can't see the mess that the wires. It's like, I mean, this, I, I found the wire the other day when I was undoing the um, patch bay. Uh, it doesn't go to anywhere, but I can't because because I'm in a six foot bus room. This side that you can't see is literally it fixed. I can't get it, so it's all pushing things with your hand. And I've got a I've got a cable that goes to somewhere, and I haven't got a clue where. Without literally stripping the lock, and it's like it's a jack, and I know it goes to a set of two, but it's not seem to. I, I don't know where it is, and I don't plug it in because I don't know if it's the out for a sampler or for the in for something. But uh, yeah, we'll see what we can do because, like I say, I've got I've got lots to get on. Yeah, but you're not going to see this. You're not going to see this till after Christmas. Alright. Fair enough. Big the big reveal. Um, That'll be good. Yeah. He's asked, well, yeah, yeah. He's asked Santa for something. Who knows? You, you I've never, asked never know. Santa for a lot of things. I don't know what's going to arrive, but I've asked him for a lot of things. <laughs> have we got? Have we got time for Rance to plug something into the MIDI out of his MIDI splitter there that he built, built tonight? C can we plug it into the the, the MS one uh, MSO one in the background there and just see what happens? I don't have a well, I don't have a MIDI DIN cable like within arm's reach without having to get up and go find well, one from a drawer. Uh, um, oh. but, but but you know, come on, give me some credit. I built that during a stream. That's pretty. I think, pretty cool. I, think I think you did really well. Um, look, I I don't think it's it's anything to be excited about. It's just a MIDI three box. Um, I'll let you guys know offline anyway. Um, yeah, if it, but if the pressure the pressure for me to do that snare mod now is extreme. <laughs> I mean, all, all I have to do is like one capacitor goes in, but it has to go in right. <laughs> Take two seconds, mate. Honestly. I know. I know. It's taken anyway, me two um, years. It's taken me t two years to get this job done. Who wants? Who wants? To, not next week on the stream. This will be just a video. But who wants me to do that? Um, the video on the um, MIDI host with using an Arduino. Because I think that'd be pretty pretty useful. Um, you know, when you've got those USB type MIDI devices controllers that, like, even the um, Inky, even the Launch Control XL, right? It's USB. You can't plug a MIDI DIN into it. So if you wanted to actually control something that was DIN based only, you could use something like this. So yeah, I might, I might do that. I might just um, do that, but not on the stream. It'll just be a separate vid. Okay, we'll start waving to everyone and giving them all big thumbs up and stuff. Bye everyone. Bye. Have a good one. Oh, yeah. next week there's going to be a really really cool guest. You'll like it on the jam. Yeah. Yeah. You guys know. You'll know who he is. But we'll see you next week. We're not going to give anything else away. See you, Dazza. See you. All right. Thanks, guys. Thanks see for letting me play music. Really enjoyed that. Have a great week. Yeah, everyone in chat. Have a good one. Bye. See you Bye. next, next Bye. time. Bye.